Hi everyone, I'm Laurentio and in this video I'm going to talk about all Marvel games for the Nintendo GameCube. Spider-Man the movie is graphically impressive. It is similar in gameplay to past Spider-Man games, but not in terms of graphics. For the time the game came out, the graphics look stunning. The story follows the movie somehow, but what will annoy you in the game, that is if you are like me, will be the controls. I have found them clunky. Especially the camera system was pretty bad. Also it features some level designs you easily get lost in. Also the level designs are a waste of the character. I mean putting Spider-Man to run in corridors is like putting Hulk in a tutu. It's not a good combination. But aside the clunky controls, the game is really something. Spider-Man has a few moves in the beginning, but the combat won't be that repetitive because with each level you find new combo moves and the combat gets to be pretty spectacular. X-Men Next Dimension is a decent fighting game. It offers 24 characters and somewhere around 11 battle arenas. It's nice to see that you get a story with cutscenes and the cutscenes are the stereotypical 2000 CGI graphics that now look very dated and soapy but were good for that time. As for game modes, you get the usual survival mode, arcade mode, versus mode, practice mode and you also get the story mode, which you can finish in around 1 hour. As for the fighting, it's decent, but you can spot collision problems where the characters don't connect or the controls might feel stiff and too exaggerated, some characters jump too high, others are too slow and their animations feel off, but overall the game still is decent, it has shortcomings and doesn't have the depth of the best GameCube fighting titles, but as I said, the game is decent. Hulk is a nice game. The only weird thing about the game is that even though it should be a time game, I mean the cover looks like the movie, the story in the game is different from the movie. But that's not a bad thing, it's just weird. Anyway, by combining things that do appear in the movie with stuff from the comic books, the game developers did a great job with the game. The game focuses on what Hulk does best, smashing. As Hulk you have normal attacks, charge attacks, you can combine attacks into multiple combos, you can even make Hulk clap his hands to create a shockwave, you can jump and charge your jumps to jump very high, you can pick up a lot of stuff from pipes to stones to cars to almost any object in the level, even soldiers, which you can throw into other enemies, and it's nice that the game makes you feel like Hulk, you feel like an unstoppable green thing that destroys anything. Hulk doesn't take damage that easily either and punches and hits in general feel great. You feel their weight and power so that the combat is enjoyable. Also enemies are interesting, I mean you don't fight just soldiers and tanks and normal stuff but gamma dogs and gamma soldiers and where the game gets boring is the Dr. Banner sequences where you are just a normal dude that has to be stealthy or has to push crates around or pushes, switches. Those parts are boring. But in general, the game is fun, except for the Dr. Banner parts. And the fact that the game gets pretty repetitive at some point. X2 Wolverine's Revenge is a beat'em up stealth game. I know, two genres that don't sound like they fit that well together. And in this game, they really don't fit. Especially the stealth part isn't fitting to a character like Wolverine, in my opinion. The stealth part of the game is finicky. You have to stick to walls and stealth kill, or, or you run like this and stealth kill. And there are sections in the game where if you screw up one stealth kill, you have to repeat the entire section. And the game is even worse, because the other part of the game, the beat'em up part, is stiff and has some really bad camera angles. You can punch your way through enemies, claw them, kick them, you can unlock more moves, but it's weird that you can't block attacks or dodge attacks. Okay, you can, somehow, but there's no button to dodge or any button to block. You just do uh, some sort of evasive roll. And it's pretty weird, it would have been really useful to have such a button, either to block or to dodge. But don't worry, you can beat the game even without a block button or a dodge button. 
I'm just saying that it would have been useful in the game to have such a button. Also the moveset is counterintuitive until you get it right. I mean it takes time to get used to the controls in the game. And even after you get used to the controls, in my opinion the game still feels stiff. And the gameplay gets even more annoying. Wolverine has the famous healing factor which makes him almost immortal in a fight. And the developers instead of letting you feel like a superhero, they introduced levels where the healing factor is turned off. Also in the levels that in which you have the healing factor, you can heal only if you retract your claws. The level designs are horrible, also the checkpoint system is atrocious. If you die, no matter where in a level, you get restarted at the beginning of that level. And considering how broken and sluggish the whole game is, a checkpoint system like this is a nightmare. Overall, X2 Wolverine is a pretty bad game. It's still playable though and you can squeeze some fun out of it, but still, even so, it's more in the bad games category. I know that many of you grew up with the game, me included, but at least in my case, it's not how I remember the game. Replaying the game for the sake of the review made me realize that my memories were sweeter than the game. But don't let my words discourage you. If there still are so many people liking the game, it means that the game is playable and even good for some. I listed some of the problems the game has so that you won't have surprises when you play it. I mean, if you start the game expecting it to be bad, you'll find the good parts of the game easier. I mean, sure, the game is stiff and sluggish and frustrating in some moments, but you can still have fun in the game. Spider-Man 2 has its graphics downgraded from the previous one, but that compromise is worth it, because aside from graphics, Spider-Man 2 excels in everything. The first thing you'll notice right from the start is that Spider-Man 2 has free roam, meaning you can roam free through Manhattan, and your roaming will be in a very appealing fashion, because the web swinging is greatly improved, having more animations and it feels more precise. And now the webs are slightly curved, giving the impression of being sticked to buildings, rather than webs that reach the sky. Also Spider-Man is now in his natural element, rather than torturing yourself with swinging in tight spaces, now most missions occur in the open, so there is a lot of room for activities, and activities are diverse and fun, like the pizza delivery mission you get in the first hour of gameplay. In rest, activities range from beating up thugs, stopping cars by slapping them, then slapping the thugs in it, or you can deliver pizza as much as you want. Pizza time. The combat is mostly button mashing, but it's a button mashing that looks good. You can also buy combo moves to spice things up. The story missions and bosses are fairly easy to beat, so are the enemies that suck up punches. The game makes a very good impression at first, but it gets sort of repetitive on the long run, so it loses momentum, but still, I really recommend you try Spider-Man 2. It's incredible, and even though repetitive, the activities are still fun, and the missions are unique and interesting. X-Men Legends 1 and 2 are some very simple action RPG dungeon crawlers. I dare to say dungeon crawlers because especially in Legends 2, you get many caves. I will compare the gameplay to Marvel Ultimate Alliance, where instead of the huge cast of characters from all of the Marvel Universe, you get only X-Men characters. The gameplay is simplistic, but that simplistic feel is only a first impression, because the games have depth. All 15 playable characters in the first game and 18 playable characters in the second one feel different when you play as them. Each character feels unique and has unique moves. And you can upgrade your characters so that the more you play, the more you feel like a badass superhero. Just try the two games. I know that they look and sound simplistic, but they are that type of game that once you get your hands on them, you have so much fun that you don't want to put the controller down. Fantastic Four is a decent game at best. 
It's a brawler that also has puzzle sections. Most of the time you're in teams. Each character feels unique and has unique abilities. It's nice that you can buy new moves for each character that spices up the gameplay and as I said it's nice that each character feels unique when you are in combat. You also get some puzzles to solve and each character has a special ability which will be used in puzzles too and that's about it. It sticks to the stereotype formula pretty well but it also gets repetitive like the formula implies since brawling and solving puzzles is all you do. As I said, overall the game is decent. The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction takes the previous game, Hulk, and brings it, as the title says, to ultimate levels. Meaning that the first one was okay, but in this one you get free roam. There are two locations you can free roam in, the desert, and the city by night and you have more moves and you can destroy more stuff and by destroying stuff you earn smash points and with those points you can buy new moves what is nice about the game is that it lets you be creative on how you want to smash the many ways you can attack never makes you get bored and i like the other one that was only about smashing this one has more objective the game has side missions too, like checkpoint races, rescue missions and long jump challenges with a giant monkey balloon acting as a parachute. Don't ask, play the game. So the game is far superior to the other one. It has free roam and a good type of free roam, with varied stuff to do in the city. This is a game I totally recommend you play, I loved it. Ultimate Spider-Man manages to get the best out of both worlds. It has nice gameplay like Spider-Man 2 had and nice graphics like Spider-Man 1 had. Well, the graphics are cartoonish, but they look amazing and give it a timeless, original feel. It's like you play an interactive comic book. Also we can see that Peter Parker is a 15 year old boy because he says he wants to conceal his identity, but in the meantime, in the beginning of the game, he just web swings without a costume and without a mask in his civil clothes in front of everyone in the middle of the day in the city. The gameplay is as awesome as Spider-Man 2. You get free roam, diverse activities, kind of similar activities to Spider-Man 2 except for pizza delivering. And story-wise, I find it superior to both other games from this video. The main villain in the game is Venom, but other characters appear too, even get a bar fight with Wolverine, how cool is that? You get to play with the black suit, with Venom, you, you even get to raise the human torch. And there are many bonuses and lots of hidden features too. The story is interesting, the gameplay is fun, the graphics look nice. Ultimate Spider-Man is the combination of everything that Spider-Man 1 and 2 did good. I recommend you the game. Marvel Nemesis is that type of bad game that is actually good. You know when something is so bad that you start laughing and enjoy the game. That's how Marvel Nemesis is. The gameplay is stiff and slippery. I know that they sound contradicting, but once you play the game you will understand what I mean. The controls are stiff and the characters slide all over the place. The animations are laughable and so are the cutscenes. And the story is like, what? And so is the end boss and after you play the game you're like, wait, what did I do? The, the title is very fitting. By the way the characters move and feel and how the whole gameplay is, they really are imperfect. Oh, and the game is a brawler and one-on-one -on -one fighter. You have some brawl sections and then get into one-on-ones. And the game is broken and feels slippery. So if you decide to play the game, you'll see that you're going to love and hate the game at the same time. 
In X-Men The Official Game, you play as three characters. Wolverine, with which you have brawling sections, Iceman, with which you have shooting levels that look like this, and with Nightcrawler you have platforming and stealth levels. And even in combat is great with Nightcrawler, as he can teleport to enemies and hit them. And each section, no matter that it's a level with Wolverine, Iceman or Nightcrawler, they all feel amazing. They nailed the feel of each character and chose the proper gameplay for each, in my opinion. The boss battles are amazing too, the game is marvelous, I recommend you try it. Oh, and the game doesn't follow the plot of the movie, in spite of the cover art. The game has a unique story separate from the cinema adaptation. And the game is awesome. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. And if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.